Hey guys, Luca here. Today I will be talking about if you want to become a software engineer, what are some of the best programming languages that you can learn for the different type of software engineering roles out there? That can be full stack, data science, machine learning, or mobile developer. So without further ado, let's get to it. The first thing I wanted to talk about is, let's say you're not determined, like you're open to full stack, mobile, like you don't really care. All you're really passionate about is like the job security aspect and what can be future proof now that we are in the age of AI. If your goal is to just find a software engineering job, then I would say one of the best language to learn right now, to many surprises, actually C++. By no means, C++ is one of the most difficult programming languages someone can learn, especially with no prior experiences. But C++ over time has consistently proved how efficient, how fast, how energy efficient, how memory efficient it can be, of course, with all the memory leaks. But the newer versions have better tools that can handle it. C++ is also versatile and it's very, very popular. Because of the fact it's really hard to learn, a lot of developers actually avoid learning it, which gives a lot of opportunities to those who know the programming language. And I have seen many of these roles consist of C++. For example, a lot of the Google search and many other teams backend, like Advertising Focus, are all mostly built on the C++ platform. And a lot of times when you have new initiative, you need a backend, you want to come up with a way that's really fast and efficient. A lot of developers, especially the senior ones who gets to make the call, they want to go with the C++ stack. Of course, the only downside is the fact that this language isn't very beginner friendly and might scare away a lot of developers. But if you are someone who is capable of doing it, then a lot of opportunities will be available for you. And once you have learned one of the hardest language, then I'm sure learning other ones, picking up other ones will be a lot smoother. So next up, we have pure front-end developers. So if you are a front-end software engineer, then JavaScript is your best friend. But on top of JavaScript, a lot of times you have to get used to a framework. Many times companies pick one of the popular ones, either React or Angular. I would say these two pretty much dominate the market by far. Of course, nowadays Vue is also the third most popular ones. But as long as you know JavaScript, I actually think these frameworks won't be too much of a difference for you. So I would say JavaScript is definitely the foundational block, especially if you want to become a front-end developer. Next up, if you are someone who's interested in back-end role, it's kind of similar to what I talked about initially. C++ is definitely one of the best language, especially at these infrastructure levels, what it can do, what the capability of. But let's say you're not that hardcore yet, or you just want to learn something you know that's more beginner friendly, then I would say Java is something that you should consider learning. A lot of bigger companies and a lot of teams are still using either Java or C++ as the backend. So knowing Java also gives you a lot of opportunities to work on some of these teams that's already using the stack. If your goal is to become a backend developer, then I would say either Java or C++ will be one of the best choices that you can have. Of course, the newer companies nowadays are using more Python. So if you are interested in that aspect, Python wouldn't be a bad choice either. So out of all of these roles I will be talking about, backend developer is actually the one that's best positioned. It's doing the most important work and the hardest work as well. So it, depending on how deep do you go in the stack, do you only worry about the backend services that the front end call, the API level, or are you going to the database side, the infrastructure side, you're trying to do all the load balancing and a bunch of other more things. Of course, the deeper you go, the better it is. But a lot of times you can't go wrong with any of these three languages, Python, Java, C++, and the ability to swap between them and depending on projects is also going to be very critical. So here you have to focus a lot more on design patterns and have a broad knowledge about design and along with the programming languages. So the next one I want to talk about is full stack. So full stack developer is a combination of these two, front end plus back end. So if you're thinking about becoming a full stack, then pretty much what I mentioned about the front end aspect and the back end aspect. The only caveat being a lot of times, sure, you're a full stack developer, you have to work from the end to end feature, but you might not go as deep as a pure back end developers. Of course, it depends on the team, the size, and the type of project you are working on. Having the flexibility is going to be very important. And as a full stack developer, you can never be sure that, hey, what which backend will I be using this time around? Because that's the one thing that could change a lot. 
of course the framework might stay the same uh, or it can change between projects but the overall javascript aspect the css aspect and the, the html won't change too much so as long as you have a strong front understanding the full stack work full stack it becomes how much front you want to do how much back end you want to do and then you can decide what type of languages fit you the best moving forward probably the easiest one to determine for mobile developers if you are thinking about becoming an ios developer then your only choice is pretty much swift or objective c of course a lot of newer companies newer teams are moving away from objective c but it's going to take a lot longer objective c code are all over the place and swift is still relatively new and many teams who are using objective c might not switch over just yet so if you want to become an ios developer then objective c or swift is your best friend and of course i would recommend swift because you can always pick up objective c per need basis and swift is a lot easier to learn and more beginner friendly so i would recommend it for a lot of people who are thinking about becoming an ios engineer swift is probably the best language that you can learn and for android developers call it Kotlin is pretty much becoming the default programming language for Android. And Android is making it very easy to convert from Java files to Kotlin. For example, a lot of the mobile team that I have seen are already requiring new code files to be wrote in Kotlin. While the best aspect is the fact that Kotlin code and Java code can be used interchangeably and very conveniently. So I would say if you want to become an Android developer, then Kotlin will be the language to learn. Here is a sneak inside view. For mobile developers, iOS is by far way more popular than Android, especially in the United States. One reason is because majority of the developers are using iOS devices and making it you know, the preferred language to learn. But if you look around the world, majority of the cell phone users are still dominated by Android platforms. And many times there has been shortage of Android developers way more than iOS because every developers in the mobile space in the US wants to do iOS because it's more fun, it's more interactive, the UI looks so much better. But Android gives you that job security and the more, up, more growth opportunity as well because you can impact way bigger market abroad. So of course, that's just something that I have observed and learned from my time as an Android developer. Like if there's going to be a job cut, iOS engineers are way more likely to be affected than a typical Android developers because the teams are always looking for Android developers. And the last popular software engineering role that I'm going to touch is data scientists or machine learning. Here, Python is by far the dominant programming language, but that doesn't mean other languages don't have a chance. For example, C++ is still going to be essential here. A lot of times at bigger tech companies who are developing these new algorithms, new third-party libraries, they are built on C++, which is why I think C++ is the dark horse. Like many people don't realize that C++ is actually very integral in some of these machine learning data science field, especially like the popular libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Like a lot of these are C++ libraries. So of course you don't have to go that deep. Python alone can take you very far in these fields. Knowing how to do the data cleaning, knowing how to use these libraries, how to read the APIs will be very critical from a day-to-day -day jobs. So if your goal is to become a data scientist or machine learning software engineer, learning Python will be very useful and something that I highly recommend. So yeah, as we can see, there's never the best programming language. A lot of times it will determine based on project, based on the stack, based on which field you are interested in. So without having a clear understanding, it's kind of hard to pick, hey, what's a good language for me to learn? But it's definitely way more useful to gain proficiencies in more than one language and be able to pick up things very fast. So I would strongly encourage people to not just be pinched into one programming language, but expand on the programming language that you already know and try to explore alternatives. This will make you a more versatile software engineer and more important for the company. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any future topics, discussion that you would like me to address. Leave them in the comment below and then I will make something similar to this video. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later.